From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Bonnie Wilson, Mr. Dollar, special deputy with the DA's office. I understand you talked to Danny Haynes. You've got a good grave mind, Mr. Wilson. Oh, tolerable. Well, what do you think? Well, I'll go about six to five. He hasn't murdered anybody. Oh, well, that's close to even money. So you're not too sure, huh? No, I'm not too sure. But then I'm not even sure yet that Marky is dead, remember? Well, maybe we can settle that question this evening. What do you mean? The salvage boys have finally got grapple lines on that boat. They figured to bring it up to the surface around eight o'clock. I'm going out in one of the harbor launches. You'd like to come along? My company's got a 75 grand stake in this. Sure, I'd like to come along. All right. You meet me at Harbor Police Headquarters at 7.30. I'll be there. Good. I'll introduce you to the late William Markey. Somehow, I sort of doubt that, Mr. Wilson. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Delta Liability, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Five matter. Location, Miami, Florida. Expense account continued. Item six, $3.85. Taxi fare to the Markey Beach House, occupied for the past three days now by his wife since William Markey's accidental death. According to all reports, a very beautiful woman. The reports were correct. Won't you come in, Mr. Dollar? Thank you. Come this way. I've been practically living in here in the study since... I just haven't had the heart to even look at the rest of the house. Yes, I, uh, I imagine it's been quite a shock for you, Mrs. Markey. Yes, terrible. No one knows. Sit down, Mr. Dollar. Thank you. I, uh, I really don't know very much about these matters. If there are papers to sign, maybe I should have a lawyer or something. No, that won't be necessary for the present. There's nothing to sign. But aren't you with the insurance company? I'm working for them at the moment as a special investigator. Oh. I'm to supply them with a full report of your husband's accident. They have to have that before they can do anything about paying off the policy. Well, couldn't the police give you all that? And there's a Mr. Wilson, I think his name is, who's with the district I've attorney's I've talked office. to Mr. Wilson. He's cooperating in every way possible. But uh, some of the details I have to get from you. Have you talked with Danny Haynes? Yes. Well, didn't he tell you what happened? He gave me a statement, yes but only covering the details he actually knew about. Well, I'm sure there's nothing I can add, Mr. Dollar. I, I wasn't even there, as you know, of course. I know, Mrs. Markey. I'll get all of those details elsewhere. But then I don't see why you've well, come out uh, here. Well, I'd, I'd like to know a few things about your husband. Things you'd know better than anybody else. Uh, his actions and behavior during the last few weeks. His uh, mental attitude. I see. You think maybe he committed suicide, is that it? I don't think anything. I'm just trying to find out. But that's what you're driving at, suicide. It's a possibility, of course. And, of course, your company isn't liable, I suppose, if it's oh, suicide. It'd still be liable, but only to the extent of $25,000 under the particular terms of the policy, not 75000 I see. Is that all, Mr. Dollar? I don't think you do see. Look, I'm not claiming it was suicide. I, I have no reason to think it was. But these questions are going to be raised by the claims board when they meet to consider settlement. And they're not going to pay out any money until they have the answers. So that's why I'm here, Mrs. Markey, to get those answers ahead of time. Now, you can help or you can hinder. But I think you ought to realize that you'll be mainly hindering yourself. It was not suicide. Bill wasn't that kind. You didn't know him. I resent your implication, Mr. Dollar. He'd never do a thing like that. I said I have no reason to believe that he did. Uh... Please forgive me. I guess I'm sort of living in a state of shock. I'm not like this, really. Suspicious, belligerent. Well, sure, I understand, and I'm, I'm sorry to have to bother you this way, but there are certain I questions... I know, I know. These things have to be done. It's all right. Would you like a drink, Mr. Dollar? Mm, not unless you're having one. Yes, I think I would like something. In that case, I'll have a scotch on the rocks, please. Oh, here, let me fix them. Thank you. Make mine the same. I guess it was the mention of suicide that set me off. 
Bill and I were married for three years. We were completely happy every minute of it. Nobody in the world had less reason than Bill to do a thing like that. What about financial problems? None that I knew about. Did you work before your marriage, Mrs. Markey? I was an entertainer. Chorus? Yes. I suppose that gives you the usual impression. <laughs> well, do I seem like a visiting fireman? No, but... Now, I just thought you might have been a dancer because you carry yourself so well. Lithe and graceful. Well, I, I've been away from it for quite some time. Well, it doesn't show. Here's your drink. Thank you. Maybe it'll help me relax a little. I think it might. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Markey, how did your husband and young Haynes get along? Well, that should be obvious. We brought him down here with us. Had him living here in the house for a month. But I, uh, I understood that was primarily your idea. Who said that? Did you suggest bringing Haynes along, or was it your husband? Well, I, I might have. I don't remember how it came up now, but Bill was all for it. Otherwise, he'd have put his foot down. Any possibility that he resented Haynes' presence but kept it to himself? Of course not. Why should he? I don't know. Well, if you're trying to imply I'm something... I'm not. I'm just asking... I understood your husband had spells of brooding during the last few weeks, and I was trying to find out the reason for it. If he did, I'm sure I didn't notice it. What are Danny Haynes' feelings towards you? I think you're pretty insulting. I wasn't intending to be. Well, what would you call it? Just another routine question. I wasn't meaning to imply that you encouraged him in any way. I certainly didn't. But he's young, impetuous. You're very attractive. Maybe he cooked up crazy notions without any encouragement. He thought of me as a friend, that's all. No attitudes on his part that your husband might have misinterpreted. I don't believe I care to answer any more questions like these, Mr. Dollar. Look, I'm not just asking them for my own pleasure, Mrs. Markey. I I'd a lot rather not ask them, but, but I've got a job to do. Well, I fail to see why it's necessary to probe into our private lives. All right, I'll tell you why. Your husband supposedly died out there beyond the surf when a cruiser burned and sank. What do you mean, supposedly? His body hasn't been recovered, so at present the evidence of his death is purely circumstantial... In fact, there isn't much evidence one way or another. But who could possibly doubt it? The insurance company will doubt it, Mrs. Markey. And they'll hold up processing any claim for payment until one of two things happens. Until I turn up sufficient proof of death to convince them, or until a court declares your husband legally dead. I didn't realize... Barney Wilson from the DA's office, for reasons of his own, is going to file for an immediate court decision. I'm pretty sure of that. It's... But as things stand now, my company will fight it. And with no more evidence than Wilson has, they'll be able to fight it successfully. All those questions, what was the point? What were you driving at? Your husband's death had to result from one of three possible causes. One, an accident. Two, suicide. Three, murder. Murder? But the, the, there was there was no one with him except... Do you mean Danny? That's one possibility. One out of three. Oh, no. I have no reason at the moment to give it any more weight than the other two. But there is one thing certain, Mrs. Markey... In view of the circumstances, not one cent of insurance is going to be paid until one of those causes is proved. But what can I do? I don't know anything about it. Maybe you don't. Or maybe there's something you've forgotten, don't think is important. Or something you haven't wanted to talk about. I don't know, of course. But it might be worth thinking about. It was nearly dark when I left the house, and I wouldn't have noticed the man standing under a palm tree by the driveway if he hadn't made a sudden move to get out of sight. Then when I walked toward him, he scurried out of the drive and slipped into a car parked at the street. I could see it was an old model, but I couldn't identify the make. I caught the last three numbers on the license plate before it disappeared around a bend. I couldn't quite figure it. It might have been Haynes, or some ghoulish swindler who was scared off when he saw the widow wasn't alone. The numbers were 642. Expense account item seven, three dollars and seventy-five cents. Taxi back to my hotel. Item eight, six dollars and a quarter. Dinner and incidentals there. And item nine, a dollar and forty cents. Taxi again to the waterfront headquarters of the harbor police. Thirty minutes later, I was in a police launch with Deputy Agent Barney Wilson, several miles down the coast, skimming across the water toward a bright cluster of spotlights where a salvage barge was working into the night to raise the burned hulk of the charter cruiser Fathom Five. You still got your mind set the same way, Mr. Dollar? What way was that? That there hasn't been any death or any murder? Oh, come now, Mr. Wilson. You're mistaking an honest scientific skepticism for a set of mine. Well, that's very pretty, Mr. Dollar. What does it mean? Well, I haven't taken any definite position yet. 
But I've got to see more evidence before I'll consider proof of death to be established without a question. That means you'll file a demurrer against a declaration by the courts, huh? It's not up to me. It's up to the company. But I can tell you right now that if you petition, they'll move to block it. You have no real evidence, Mr. Wilson. I'm getting it, though, piece by piece. The sea is starting to give up its prey, Mr. Dollar. What do you mean? The boys found his shoe late this afternoon, washed up in the surf, just about where you'd expect to find it if it had been carried in by the current. Identifiable? From the same New York shop that Marky's other shoes came from. Same size, same style. Well, it's something, all right, but it's still not conclusive. Who would he ask that Marky walks up and tells you he's dead? No, no, I guess I'd settle for just seeing him that way. Oh, by the way, I wonder if you could have an auto license checked for me, a partial license on a used car, Florida plates. The last three numbers are 642. Well, it might take a while with no more than that to go on. Well, I've got an idea the car may have been purchased within the last three weeks or so. Maybe that'll narrow it down. You got an idea it may mean something? Look, I have no idea at all. I'm just playing the hunches. But it's about time something in this case started meaning something. We edged the launch up the side of the barge, tied up to a stanchion, and climbed on deck. The power winches on the derricks were still grinding away, and the sunken hull of the burned cruiser was nearing the surface. A crew of men waited with salvage pontoons, ready to float the supporting cradle into place as soon as the waterlogged hulk was raised. Wilson and I stood by the rail, watching, not talking, wondering, I suppose, what answers the wreck might supply us with. The taut steel cables inched their way slowly up from the depths, and finally the boat itself broke the surface of the water. Then the men moved in with the pontoons, and other crew members dropped a suction hose into the water-filled hull and started a pump to empty. Finally, the whole thing was high enough so we could see that the cabin and the deck were badly burned, almost destroyed. But strangely enough, the hull itself seemed to be undamaged. Then Wilson and I both noticed something at the same time, a solid column of water spouting from a round hole near the keel of the boat, and we both realized what it meant. Look, Dollar. Look there. Somebody opened the seacocks. Somebody left them wide open. So one thing is certain. It wasn't an accident. She was sunk deliberately. That's exactly what I've been trying to tell you right from the start. Huh? William Markey was murdered. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a photograph, a silver cup, a harried widow, and the dead begin to stir with life. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>